Well, one year ago, promoter Bob Arum of Top Rank Boxing believed that he had made a matchup for June 9 of 2007 between Antonio Margarito and Miguel Cotto. For Cotto, it would have been his biggest test so far along the way on the rise to superstarter. For Margarito, it would have been his chance to fight a better known, more decorated fighter after having been turned down in approaches to trying to fight Shane Mosley and Floyd Mayweather in the years preceding that. Surprisingly, and at a moment when Aaron was pretty sure he had the fight made, Margarito turned left and decided instead to hold on to his welterweight title belt by fighting Paul Williams. And then just as surprisingly, Margarito went out and lost to Williams. But the road not taken has finally led back to the place where Margarito wanted to be. At long last, tonight, he gets his chance to fight a superstar. Ironically, the man he shied away from a year ago, Miguel Cotto. Their moment has come. Let's get ready for the main event. This is boxing at its finest. Hard right hand by Cotto. Margarito's done some damage. Two of the best in the business, in the prime of their career. A flurry of punches. This is brilliant stuff. Facing off in a high-risk, high-reward showdown. Each fights for personal glory while defending the honor of their boxing-crazed homelands. Mexico, Puerto Rico. And in the most violent of sports, both have proven among the game's most ferocious practitioners. Miguel Cota doesn't just beat you, he beats you up. Antonio Margarito comes to hurt you. What is among the sport's leading lights? Left, right, left, continued assault from the Puerto Rican star. The other yearns for greater recognition. Margarito wanted to make a statement. How's this for a statement? Tonight they meet in a hotly anticipated matchup that screams high action drama. Moments from now, it's Miguel Cotto versus Antonio Margarito with welterweight supremacy on the line. So it's time for our main event. Champion Miguel Cotto against challenger Antonio Margarito. 12 rounds of boxing for the welterweight championship of the world. Cotto versus Margarito is being brought to you by MGM Grand, the city of entertainment in Las Vegas. Rums of Puerto Rico, the rum capital of the world. Tecate beer, cerveza with an attitude. Reebok, your move. Brought to you by Universal Pictures, Death Race the Movie, in theaters August 22. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. As a welterweight, Miguel Cotto has climbed to another level in the boxing world in the past year. Since defeating Shane Mosley, Cotto's excellence is now unquestioned. And the announced retirement of Floyd Mayweather has elevated Cotto's command of the spotlight. Meanwhile, Antonio Margarito has long hungered for this chance at a huge fight. A fight which eluded him in the Mayweather era. After losing to Paul Williams, it seemed all to have evaporated for Antonio. But now he has risen from that disappointment to again become a legitimate threat to the top fighters in the sport. Tonight, can Antonio Margarito finally make it over the top? Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. We're live at ringside in Las Vegas. And just think for a moment about everything which has taken place in the sports world so far in 2008. In the Super Bowl, the New York Giants upset the Patriots' run at a historic unbeaten season. In the NCAA championship game, Kansas falls behind, seemingly impossibly with two minutes to go, and comes back to reel in Memphis to win the national championship. Big Brown wins the Kentucky Derby in the Preakness, overwhelmingly favored at the Belmont, loses the Triple Crown. Tiger Woods wins a playoff and a sudden death at the U.S. Open on a leg which ultimately requires surgery. Rafael Nadal, or the return of the Boston Celtics to the NBA throne is marked by their defeat of the Lakers in the NBA Final Series. Rafael Nadal wins over Roger Federer at Wimbledon in a match called by John McEnroe, the greatest tennis match ever played. Michael Phelps and Dara Torres score impossibly historic accomplishments at the United States swim trials to set themselves up for similar drama in Beijing. And now tonight, 
comes boxing's best chance to put on the board an event of epic, memorable quality to match those things which have already taken place in such a dramatic year of 2008. Max Kellerman, Antonio Margarito had the chance to fight Miguel Cotto a year ago on June 9 and decided not to take the fight, in effect giving Cotto the chance to go to graduate school against Zab Judah and Shane Mosley. Is that a decision that Margarito might at some point regret tonight? We'll find out in a few minutes. Um, it did certainly give us all the chance to see that Miguel Cotto is not just a seek and destroy fighter, but a really well-rounded craftsman in the ring. He's a multi-dimensional fighter, and maybe that's why the odds for this fight, in fact, seem a bit wide in Cotto's favor. In the interim, Margarito lost to Paul Williams, but in that loss learned a valuable lesson that he can't, as many pressure fighters have throughout history, he can't start slowly and give away early rounds. That lesson he seemed to learn when he fought and blew out Golden Johnson in one round after losing to Paul Williams. Because of that lesson that Margarito seems to have learned, we're promised here tonight not only an epic fight, but the potential for a Hagler Hearns kind of opening round. And Jim, that would be something that would certainly put boxing on the board, and it's an impressive board this year. Well, indeed, a lot of people do expect that Margarito will try to apply maximum pressure from the beginning of the fight because, after all, he is the longer, bigger, perhaps stronger fighter. But Emmanuel Stewart, Miguel Cotto earned his great reputation in the sport at first by hammering away to the body of lesser fighters and chopping them down to the ribcage. Then last year, he elevated himself to another level by skillfully outboxing two master boxers. So which of the two Miguel Cotos shows up tonight? I think we're gonna see both of them. Speaking of Miguel, when I spoke to him earlier, he said he's confident that even though he's shorter in stature, he can outbox Margarita because Margarita is not that fast, not that coordinated, and Margarita fights in a semi-crouch, so he really doesn't utilize his height, so to say, like guys like Lennox Lewis and some talk. So he feels that he can outbox him. But nevertheless, I think that somewhere along the way, he's not going to be able to outbox him because Margarita is too strong and he puts a lot of pressure, takes a good punch, and a fight is going to break out somewhere. And Miguel is going to have to fight. He's not going to be able to outbox him all the way. And also, the mindset of the two guys, both guys have been really world champions since 2004 for the most part in some weight division, maybe outside of nine months for Margarita, so they think like champions. They have their own big following, so they, they're gang leaders. So they have the mentality of warriors. In addition to being good fighters and tough guys, they have a reputation to uphold among their own people. So it's going to be a good fight. Indeed, if you followed the newspaper and internet, flood of print leading up to the fight, you know that some of the mindset that Emmanuel refers to is influenced by the fact that this is the latest in a long line of historic confrontations in boxing between a fighter from Puerto Rico and a fighter from Mexico. Everyone with an eye toward those cultural roots, let's go now to the pageantry that begins in the ring with our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, to honor the nationalities of challenger and champion, and the home venue. Please rise for three national anthems. First, the national anthem of Mexico, performed by Rocky. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresad y el bridón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tú sienes de oliva, de la paz el arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino nos convoca a lidiar con valor. 
Para ti las guirnaldas de oliva, un recuerdo para ellos de gloria, un laurel para ti de victoria, un sepulcro para ellos de honor, un sepulcro para ellos de honor. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apretad y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México, señores! Now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the anthem of Puerto Rico, please welcome Victor Manuel. La tierra de Borinque, en donde he nacido yo, es un jardín florido de mágico primor. Un cielo siempre nítido le sirve de dosel y dan arrullos plácidos las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó Colón. Exclamó lleno de admiración, esta es la linda tierra que busco yo. Es Borinque en la hija, la hija del mar y el sol, 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 del mar y el sol. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem of the United States of America, please welcome the lovely and talented Miss Jasmine Viegas. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleam. Whose bright stars and bright stars through the pale wordless fire o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallant and the rockets rang loud, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled bear take for this welterweight championship showdown between Cotto and Margarito. And you see the three-year age advantage for the Puerto Rican fighter perceived as being at the absolute peak of his career. Margarito, on the other hand, with a three-inch height advantage. Arm lengths, however, are equal when measured from the armpit 
to the end of the fifth. They both weighed in white at the 147 pound weight limit and both look spectacular in doing so. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Miguel Cotto Antonio Margarito fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commission. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case it comes caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Antonio Margarito will enter the ring as about an eight to five underdog. There were moments yesterday when Cotto was favored by more than two to one, but those odds have been bet down in the closing hours before the fight takes place. Walking in the footsteps of Mexican legends like Salvador Sanchez and Julio Cesar Chavez and Carlos Zarate and the many before him who have faced off against Puerto Rican fighters in matchups like this. And this is the opportunity for which Margarito has so long awaited while being deemed by many the most avoided man in the sport. Floyd Mayweather turned down $8 million. Shane Mosley turned down $8 million. Twice now, Miguel Cotto has said, yes, I will fight him. And partially because of that, Margarito has been completely a gentleman in his pre-fight treatment of Cotto and has said absolutely nothing derisive about the opponent. Yes, but this is his time right now. He feels this is his moment. And by the way, Jim, I'm just a few seats down from me is the great Julio Cesar Chavez, who's doing the broadcast also back in Mexico. But this is his moment. I first met him, I think, around 94 when I was training Chavez in Tijuana. And he came to the gym. He was just an amateur kid, and that was his hero. Now he has a chance to be the big star in the Mexican community. Max Kellerman, one reason why he was so avoided, he turned pro at 15 in Mexico. He lost fights at a moment in his career when he had no leverage to try to pick opponents or to be guided by a promoter or a manager. And that left a stain on his career record, which made him seen as dangerous and not worth the risk. Yes, and as a result of those early career losses, really when he was still a boy, he developed the way old-time fighters used to develop. He had to fight his way up through the ranks. And here he is, is a good reason he's been the most avoided guy. He never stops coming. He's a real puncher. He takes a hell of a shot. He holds the CompuBox record for the most punches ever thrown in a 12-round fight, 1,675 of them against Joshua Clotty. It is problematic to try to get off that many punches against this man, Miguel Cotto, because as Cotto comes to the ring, walking in the footsteps of previous Puerto Rican legends like Carlos Ortiz and Wilfredo Gomez and Felix Trinidad. He has graduated from being perhaps the most devastating body puncher in the sport to now a body puncher who can box. There's one of his sons looking on. The family man, Cotto, can do it all, Emmanuel. He can do it all, and he's had to do it all in order to survive. As a junior welterweight and as a welterweight, he's had some rough moments, but he survived them and won those fights by boxing, by punching. But still, his signature punch is the left hook. Maybe one of the best left hooks to the body that I have ever saw in boxing. And Max, in contrast to Margarito, he has the kind of background which has been the most successful path in the most recent years of modern boxing. A great amateur career, polished off at the Olympics, followed by a big money contract with the kind of promoter who could guide his path. Yes, exactly. His pedigree is top notch. He's a, he was a blue chip prospect, successful at the highest levels of international amateur competition. His unblemished record as a professional speaks to his excellence. But Jim, his vulnerability makes him even more exciting than he would otherwise be. Margarito got here the hard way. Miguel Cotto was ordained for moments like this. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, Bob Arum's top ranked boxing is proud to present the main event of the evening, a fight fans dream come true. 12 rounds of boxing for the welterweight Championship of the World! Sanctioned by the WBA and sponsored by Tecate. Cerveza with Attitude. Reebok. 
Rums of Puerto Rico, and Universal Pictures' Death Race in theaters everywhere, August 22nd. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman John Bailey, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system, should it go the distance. Glenn Hamada, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action at the bell, Kenny Bayless. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, he's 30 years of age and stands 5'11". Official weight, 147 pounds. Professional record, 36 victories, including 26 knockouts with five defeats. And he has knocked out 20 of the 27 opponents faced over the last 11 years. From Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, the two-time welterweight champion of the world, the Tijuana Tornado, Antonio Margarito. <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner. Wearing silver with blue, 27 years old, standing 5'7 and officially weighing 147 pounds. Professional record, a perfect one. 32 bouts, 32 victories, including 26 knockouts, with 18 knockouts in six rounds or less. Presenting the reigning, defending, undefeated. WBA welterweight champion of the world, De Carlos Puerto Rico, Miguel Angel Cotto. Okay, Trump's okay here, here. Trump's okay here. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room on the caution to keep the fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck, Bruno Suarte. Touch him up. This is the reason to love boxing. No moment in sport matches this. Suspense. It took a long time to clear a crowded ring. Many believe that Margarito will try to jump Cotto from the beginning and use his bigger, stronger body to put pressure on the Puerto Rican fighter. Cotto seems ready for that. Both fighters using the jab early on. Now, one of the things that impressed me, being in the opposite corner against Margarita, his defense is much, much better than is appreciated. Since he got his career rolling, Antonio Margarito has never lost to a shorter man. But Miguel Cotto has stared down taller opponents before. Early on, it's Cotto who's the more accurate puncher. He's landed his jab a couple of times and landed a good left hook. Now there's an uppercut from Margarita. And the first minute produces more of a boxing match than some expected. And Cotto confidently steps inside and whips the left hook again. Margarito coming forward behind the jab. Margarito's giving Cotto a lot of respect in this first round. Yeah, I think he's fighting a very, very small. I think Margarito's fighting a very, very good fight. He's catching punches. And his jab is being very effective, too. He's not as flashy, but his jab is still very effective. 
Good left hand by Cotto. Both fighters have had some offensive moments. Cotto lands the right hand and holds it up for the crowd to see. Miguel Cotto looks very sharp, very quick in yeah. the early going. Another left hook. Margarito lands his own left simultaneously. Flurry by Cotto. Margarito looking for opportunities, but putting space between the punches. Now the left uppercut for Margarito. And he steps in in the corner and fires away. Cotto calmly fights his way out, switches southpaw. Good job slipping the right hand there. And another combination. Now a Margarito combination. And Cotto counters perfectly. Terrific left hooks by Cotto. Margarito misses the uppercut. In a very precise first two and a half minutes. Both men boxing. Cotto goes to the body first. Kenny Bayless says keep him up. Cotto says they were right on the belt line. A skillful first round. But at the end of the day, it appeared Cotto has had more moments than Margarita. Use your jab, use your jab. Jab, the right hand, and then the uppercut. And be careful with the counter punch. That's what he's using. He's using the counter punch, but be more intelligent. Be focused. Focused on what he's doing, because he can do the jab. Careful with his elbows. Careful with his elbows, because he puts them in. Very, very nice first round. Okay, All right, let's do the same thing. Here we see what may have been the cleanest punches of the whole round. Even though it was a lot of punches in the stone, the right hand and left hand right between the gloves by Cotto, I think, was the best clean punches that landed during that round. Compubox numbers pretty one-sided. Margarito 12 out of 57. Cotto 32 out of 70. That's a the stunning round statistical round. That's the round but that I saw. I thought Cotto fairly dominated the round with his boxing stuff. Well, I think that's, a, that's the way that most boxing experts expected the first round to go, even the guys who picked Margarita. But Cotto is a much better boxer, much faster, much more crisp puncher. But what's going to happen after about four or five rounds is really what's the big question. Margarito starts to smoke, and then we'll find what's what. I'm just surprised that Margarito hasn't tried to produce more pressure early on. If Antonio Margarito only throws 57 punches in a round, that's a slow round for him. He's showing tremendous respect for Cotto's skill and speed. Cotto sticking his jab right between Margarita's gloves. Margarito reaching, lunging, hasn't really found the timing to land repeated combinations yet. Now he gets in a wide right hand on the cheek of Cotto. The, the drama here is also Margarito's such a good puncher, and Cotto has been on the canvas and rocked before. Now Margarito gets the space he wants and eats an uppercut for his trouble and smiles at Cotto as if to say, all right, now we're fighting. Watch your heads, watch your heads. Kenny Bayless says, watch your heads. They're yes, landing yes, with their hands. But, but Cotto's one, but Margarita is really putting a lot of pressure on him, unlike any he's ever had. And pressure from a taller fighter is different than from a shorter fighter. And Margarito still landed an excellent right hand about 10 seconds ago. But see, right here, Margarita's walking him down again. He's not letting him get that space. He's taking his space from him. Cotto's still patiently hunting for the counter-punching opportunities. Margarito is starting to develop the volume which has typified his career. Cotto pounding him with repeated left hooks. Both fighters have said hello in round two. Margarito hammering Cotto to the body in the corner. I figured this would get to this about the fourth round. It's happening earlier because Cotto cannot nearly just outbox this man. The man picks most of the punches off. No, He's going to have to fight it. Cotto with two good left hooks upstairs. Margarito drives him back with a right hand. Unbelievable. They took a round to warm up. And 
this is the fight that everyone expected to see. Indeed. There's blood coming yeah. from the nose of Miguel Cotto. So Margarito's made his mark in terms of drawn blood. And the Mexican fans in the crowd love that. Cotto chopping and chopping with the left hand. Margarito firing with the right. It's a punch, counter punch, confrontation. What a round, round two has been. Wow. Most of the crowd of 12,500 stood up to applaud that round. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Where's the blood from? Okay, it's okay. Not a problem. Breathe, breathe deeply. He's going good. All right. A little water now. Throw it out. He's going to want to do everything he's going to go through. Headbutts, keep your distance. Keep your distance. Here you see Cotto landing beautiful clean shots. He's landing most of the clean effective punches. Fighting off the ropes very effectively. But how long can he keep going if Margarita takes those tight punches and keeps putting that pressure on? That's the question. Copy box numbers in round two were spectacular. Cotto 35 out of 80. Margarito 33 out of 96. Together they landed 54 power shots. So it has suddenly become the gunfight that everyone anticipated. Now let's see if Cotto can begin to make it more of a boxing match again. Cotto trying to use his feet, create space, and limit the volume of Margarito's punches. Margarito trying to crowd Cotto into the corners and against the ropes where he can fire away at will. Cotto counters off the ropes with the left hook. A pattern that begins to repeat throughout the fight. Combinates and punching from Cotto. And he backs away again. Right hand and a left uppercut for Cotto. Margarito landed a right hand. Had to go back to the phone booth again. Cotto lands two body shots and a left hook upstairs. Margarita reaching with a left and with two body shots of his own. Hard right hand over the top for Margarita. Cotto with a right and a left inside. Again, they trade body shots. Cotto's was the harder blow. What a variety of punches from Cotto in that combination. Margarito just keeps coming. Body shot, two uppercuts, chopping right hand. Cotto comes back with three punches of his own. I think Margarito right now, his defense is just doing very well. And he's catching a lot of punches and steadily applying pressure all while he's blocking punches. Even though I have Cotto winning, it looks pretty rough going down the stretch. Good left hand by Cotto, creates space again. We've seen fights this year like Marquez Vasquez, but it's not at this size. These are regular sized guys. A warning for Margarito for a low blow. He hit Cotto right on the hip. It's just unreal for welterweights of this size to be trading these kind of shots in a sustained way like this. We promised violence. You're getting violence. And so left far, hook. it's playing out the way most envision. Margarito chasing Cotto around the perimeter of the ring. Cotto's superior boxing ability giving him the advantage. But Margarito very live. And as the fight wears on, he gets busier and busier and increasingly dangerous. Every time Cotto plants his feet, they trade shots. Every time Margarito lands a punch, Cotto counters sometimes with two. Don't be overconfident. Don't be overconfident. No time. Water on his head. Everything's okay. 
I'm doing good. Don't be overconfident. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. No, forget the hitting. Let's see a little bit of the face. Okay. Don't worry about it. You have no. There's no reason to be on the inside. Put your hands on the inside and get out. This right here is consistent of the pattern of the fight. A, Margarita very aggressively coming in, but Cotto landing the clean precision punches. And steadily moving away after that to avoid getting caught in any exchanges. Averaging jabs per round through the first three rounds, according to Coffee Box, Cotto 9 of 26. Margarito not as accurate with his jab, only landing three out of 32 per round. Our first chance to check in with our unofficial scorer, Harold Letterman. How do you have it through three? Two. two rounds to one, 29. 28, Miguel Cotto. Chill out for Miguel Cotto did a nice job of round one. He won that. In round two, Antonio Margarito got him up against the ropes, got real good leverage, and got his shot shots. But in round three, Miguel Cotto kept moving to the left, and he was just out punching him whenever he stopped. But be as it may, I don't think Antonio Margarito is doing a great job cutting off that ring. What he's doing is he's chasing him. He ought to step to his right and whack him. Be as it may, two to one, Miguel Cotto. Question if the fight continues like this is can Cotto sustain this pace? Margarito typically gets stronger as the fight wears on. Absolutely. That's my biggest concern if I was in Cotto's corner. I know I had the better fighter, but can he sustain this pace for 12 rounds? Because Margarito's putting a lot of pressure on him. And Margarito's defense is a lot better than the public is giving credit for. Miguel Cotto hasn't exactly faded in the late rounds in fights against guys like Judah and Mosley. I think it's fairly audacious, guys, for you to question whether Miguel Cotto can finish. But, of course, Margarito yeah, is a, big is a man. unique pressure fighter. He's a big, big man. And it's a different thing. And he throws punches from all angles. He bangs you on your shoulders, your elbows, your head. He's throwing a lot of punches from different angles. And just the psychological pressure Margarito yeah, exerts by constantly coming forward. And taking the best punch sometimes. And having such a rock-solid chin. He's shown his chin, that's for sure. That Cotto has landed anxiety. some solid shots like that straight right hand. Margarito is walking through Cotto's best firepower. Yes, he is. Cotto is winning the fight, but he's going to have to be prepared to go 12 rounds like this. And that's going to be very, very difficult. Well, most who favored Cotto favored him on points. And he, he does seem to show that he can outbox Margarito most of the way. No doubt about it. Cotto is putting on quite a display of skill. Margarito is putting on an equally impressive display of will. Body shots by Antonio. Cotto may regret having stopped in a corner, but now he comes back with a hard right hand and a left hook and an uppercut. Three clean shots. Another left hook for Cotto. Down the stretch of round four, it was Miguel Cotto who scored. Breathe, breathe, breathe with me. Good. Let me, let me work the eye. Breathe again. He's frustrated already. He's already frustrated. Use the attack. The inside or the outside. You've got to work him. You've got to throw punches. Throw punches and connect, connect, connect. Don't let him build. Here you see Margarita's pressures. He's throwing a lot of different punches at Cotto. And the thing about it, his punches come from different angles. He doesn't throw the same punch over and over. Beautifully short right hand right there. But Cotto is such a sharp precision punch. He comes right back and catches him at the end of the round. Beautifully short left hook. Round five begins. Copy box count in round four. Had Cotto landing 23 of 67 to 15 of 86 for Margarito. A much higher percentage for Cotto, built on his 9 out of 29 jabs. Once again, Cotto starts the action in round 5. Then, 
begins circling to his left again. He's circling away from Margarito's left hook into Margarito's right hand. And as Harold Letterman pointed out, you wonder when Margarito will step over to the right and try to begin cutting off the ring. Margarito keeps leaving himself open to Miguel Cotto's left hand. A lot of Miguel Cotto's good shots have been the left hook and the jab. But dude, Cotto is really a southpaw. He's left-handed. That's why his power punches his left jab and his hook. But uh, Margarito, who is a little bit slower, but he punches good with both hands, even though he's a little slower. Margarito able to find Cotto with the right hand there. Now lands a roundhouse right. Cotto stands and fights again, then moves away. Cotto holding his gloves very high in this round, guarding his head. Uppercut by Cotto. Stops Margarito in his tracks. And he moves away again. Good block there by Cotto. Cotto having to use his feet over and over and over under relentless pressure from Antonio Margarito. Margarito's got him sliding along the ropes most of the fight now. He's keeping him fighting off of the ropes. And that's not good. Margarito also appears to be getting a little yeah. closer with those right hands. Yeah, closer and closer. That's right. Because a tall guy that shoots a right hand over your shoulder that's not too wide can catch you, especially when you get tired. And they stand still in trade. Cotto lands more punches. Oh, he's, he's definitely but he landed. doesn't want to do it much. He wants to keep moving away. Body shot by Margarito. Cotto momentarily moves to his right. Steps up, fires two left hands, then moves away again. Cotto having to use his feet to limit the pressure over and over. Margarito dancing with it, trying to cut him off. Cotto lands a left hook and moves away again. Another straight left hand lands for Cotto. Margarito frustrated as he looks for opportunities. Very frustrated. And Cotto realizes he's winning the fight, but he's got six or seven more rounds of going at this pace. If he can do that, he can win the fight. But if he can't, he's going to have a big problem. But the cleaner punches belong to Miguel Cotto. He tends to win the flurries. And this is what makes him clean what kind of judge. A lot of judges like the guy going forward. Two hard right, right hands first. Margarito. Cotto comes back with a left. Eats another right hand. Ducks three right hands in a row. But if you go by clean punches, Cotto's winning almost every round. You're waiting too much. You're waiting too much with your mouth open. Come on, go. Cut his exits. Cut his exits. Use the jab. Use the right hand. Come on, move your head. I told you already. Come on, man. You start moving on the inside. You're looking for just one punch. Don't look for just one punch. What happened? Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Okay. Use the combinations on the inside. We use them very nicely. Come on, dude. Don't stay in there with them. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go. box numbers in the fifth round. Cotto 14 to 25 power shots, 56%. 15 to 34 jabs. Overall 29 to 59. Margarito threw 105 punches, but landed only 20% of them. Cotto wins the round again on Harold Letterman's scorecard and starts to build a working margin there. We were expecting a classic, and what we have so far is a classic performance by Miguel Cotto. But the fight does give you the sense, especially when Cotto drops his hands, as he did at the end of the last round, to avoid punches, that it could turn on a dime with Margarito's pressure and power punching. And you heard Leon Capetillo, Margarito's trainer and father figure, asking him to speed up, come on, get in harder, and throw more shots. He only threw 105 punches in the last round. Javier Capetillo, excuse me. And here Margarito. Low by Margarito, and he got away with it. But here he picks up where he left off at the end of the last round, at least throwing more punches and landing some with force, even when they don't land cleanly. And Cotto comes back with two solid uppercuts and backs away again. As 
long as Cotto can show the judges that he lands the cleaner punches, he can probably get away with being the constant retreater. If Margarito begins to land more, then the fact that he's going forward and applying all the pressure may augur in his favor. Another brilliant rally by Cotto, and he moves away. And another big uppercut. It's interesting that one guy is putting all the pressure on, and another guy was retreating, as you say, but landing a really clean, effective punches. So this it, it, fight could be judged anyway. But anyway, I feel Cotto's definitely won almost every round virtually what I mean, but they have been very tough competitive rounds, and the momentum seems to be moving towards Margarito, though. I showed you his skill right there, shouldering Margarito off and landing a clean right hand, picking his spot there and landing a left hook. Margarito firing, firing, firing. Not as accurate, not as sharp, but constantly keeping the pressure off. One minute to go in round six. Cotto with another one of his flurries. And another uppercut. Margarito misses with the right hand as Cotto steps away. Through most of his career, Miguel Cotto has used his feet to put pressure on opposing fighters. Tonight, he's trying to use his feet to keep pressure off. It's a classic reversal. And now Margarito throws all the shots as Cotto looks for space. Yeah, right away, as soon as he lands that flurry, Margarito's running him down again. And that's the very discouraging to any fighter. Hard right hand by Cotto. And a good left hook. Margarito fires away to the body three times. I think Cotto's actually sharp dominating left. this round again. But Margarito is really making Long him down. pay a price in this round with those body shots. Cotto blocked most of those and then slipped the others. But it looks to the crowd as though Margarito is putting all the pressure on. Tremendous combat in the sixth. The family Cotto at ringside. There's the missus. There are four children surrounding them. Breathe deeply, breathe deeply. Let's see. Open the mouth. Doing very good. Don't stay, don't stay against the ropes too long. Get out there. Get outside. Move. Come on, son. You're inside. Throw. Throw the hook. Here you see Margarita putting on a tremendous amount of pressure, but he's paying the price. As he's coming in, applying the pressure, momentum may be going in his direction, but the clean punches are landed by Cotto. Our shots in round six, Miguel Cotto, 20 out of 44. Antonio Margarito threw 75 get the power water, shots, get the water. but landed 22 of them. So the much higher connect percentage for Cotto. And Harold Letterman, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim, 58, 56, four rounds to two. Uh, Miguel Cotto. Jim, Miguel Cotto is boxing a beautiful fight. Winning this fight at clean punches and ring generalship. But in round six, Antonio Margarito figured the only way I'm going to get to this guy is to slow him up with body shots. And I thought he whacked real well to the body to win that round. I've got a 42 total, but Jim Bellis has got to let Margarito fight inside. Otherwise, Margarito don't have a chance. Certainly, Margarito Emanuel, as you mentioned, changed the momentum in the last round. The momentum is to me is going to Margarito, even though he may be losing the fight. But he's getting closer and closer. He's landing his punches, and he's working that shot I told you about up through the center very effectively now, the left uppercut. You see that? There it is again. This is the first round where I feel that Margarito is fighting on even terms with yeah. Cotto. So even, even if I would be in Cotto's corner, I would be Cotto's winning. Hurt, guys. Cotto's Cotto's badly hurt. hurt by a series of Margarito uppercuts. They hammered him. Margarito goes right back to the left-hand uppercut. Cotto is in trouble along the ropes. Biggest trouble he's been in oh, since the Ricardo Torres fight several years ago. Margarito stalking and stalking. And this ain't Ricardo Torres. Cotto's looking for breathing room, and there is none. He has to fight his way out for breathing room. He gets hit by a hard right hand. Margarito throwing uppercut after uppercut. He might launch 120 punches in the round. Cotto turns southpaw. Hits Margarito with a left hand and backs away. Miguel Cotto blowing blood out of his nose and his mouth after that violent assault by Antonio Margarito. I think we're seeing the effects of that body work that Harold was talking and about. And now a series of clean punches for Cotto. 
And another left hook gives him breathing room to back away. Soto blocking most of these, but under severe pressure as he does so. Switches southpaw again. Hits Margarito in the mouth with the left hand. Margarito with an unbelievable chin just keeps coming. Yeah. It's that amazing Margarito beard that's putting a lot of pressure on Miguel yeah. Cotto. Miguel just can't hurt him. Jim, this is exactly the way I figured the fight was going to go. Now we have our classic. But you know, Cotto has shown his grit. Cotto has been in these situations similar to some degree, but never with a big man like this. Tremendous shots by Cotto. A hard right hand by Margarito. And he lands another uppercut. Cotto trying to get a left. What a round. Here you see Margarito relax, putting on tremendous pressure, throwing so many punches, and all of them are powerful, particularly the left uppercuts, which I predicted would be his best punch in us. But right now, Cotto's having a problem because all of those such as the short left hook, it was just a matter of so many punches coming from so many angles. Antonio Margarito has legendary stamina. He enhanced that credential in that round, throwing 130 punches, landing 48 of them. 46 of 104 power shots. Cotto landed 23 of 52. And some of them were hellacious punches. But Margarito is walking right through them. It's a lot of guys who had those big volume of punches, but usually they're guys who don't have much punching power. Margarito is one of the few guys that throws a lot of punches and has power almost in every punch. Two good jabs for Cotto. He's going to have to try to find a way to make it more of a boxing match again. Through seven rounds, Antonio Margarito has already thrown more power punches against Miguel Cotto than any opponent had ever managed in any fight in 32 previous professional fights up to now. Well, we know Cotto has shown his grit before. That's one thing I have. Now, he's been a true warrior. He's been in bad shape a lot of times, and he's came back and not just survived, but one fight. So you can't never count him out. But he's never been able to get a figure this big. Though. He's facing epic pressure tonight. Antonio Margarito is bringing the frustrations and the impatience of a long career of waiting to this moment against Miguel Cotto, leaving nothing to chance. Constantly releasing his hands in bunches. You know, not only is Cotto the better boxer, I think he's the heavier puncher, but he doesn't take the shots as well as Margarito. Who does? That's a good point, man. Who does? Cotto's landing thudding blows, and Margarito is stepping right through them and dancing forward. He's moving in with his little jig. He's just as happy like he enjoys the situation. But he can't get to Cotto fast enough. Cotto's done a good job of sort of getting the genie back into the bottle in this round. He's limiting Margarito's flow with his footwork and the southpaw stance that he turns to from time to time. Hasn't been trapped as often as he was in the last round. But it still is Margarito pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. Cotto lands a combination and a big uppercut and steps away. That right hand to Margarito keeps coming up just a little short, but it's getting closer and closer. Yeah. 
Put the pail up. All right, put it here. Put your head in. I think we're winning, but don't be overconfident. Okay, okay, okay. Power shots at eight. According to copy box numbers, Cotto 14 out of 33, Margarito 20 out of 59. You heard Javier Capetillo saying to Margarito, I think we're winning. On Harold Letterman's scorecard, the fight is now even through eight rounds. What a drama we might be looking at in the last four rounds. Jim, I have Cotto up a couple points, but it seems to me that Cotto wants this fight to end. He wishes it was over already, whereas Margarito thinks the fight is just beginning. That Cotto, in a weird way, is in survival mode, wants to run out the clock. I would agree with you on that match. I think that uh, I would maybe have possibly... Cotto still ahead, possibly, because you all get excited about the last rounds and the most exciting. But still, Cotto had a lot of rounds in the bank. But it's the momentum of the fight and who seems to be comfortable with the situation. And, and even he as Cotto... run out the clock against Antonio Margarito. And, and even as Cotto does what he just did, which is land a series of unanswered punches, it still is he who gives you the sense that he's shaky. Cotto's sitting on the middle rope. Margarito fired away with a bunch of punches again. And the next stop from Miller Rope is the floor. It's the next place he'll be sitting that if he don't do something soon. The fact is, Margarito landed nothing big in the last round and hasn't landed anything big so far in this round. Cotto continues to land the sharper, cleaner punches when he lands. But he's backing away. He's bleeding from the mouth and the nose. He looks tireder than Margarito. All the mental impressions augur in favor of the Mexican star. Again, Cotto switches southpaw. Lands a couple shots and backs away. Still the more accurate puncher. Simply not throwing nearly as many. Margarito starts to land again. Cotto ducking and slipping and firing back. And still landing. Clean, crisp, heavy shots to the head with both hands. Just like that. Two good left hooks from Cotto as Margarito continued to try to apply a welter of punches, but without big effect. But body shot landed for Margarito. His best strategy is to keep going to the body. Good left hook by Miguel Cotto, and he backs away. Oh, stop, stop. This is a hard round for judges to score. Margarito's applied all the pressure. Cotto clearly landed the more effective blows. Where's the answer? Okay, okay. Give me some water. Water. Come on, this time your punches should be solid punches, power punches. Come on, your punches are slow. They have to be more powerful. Hold the water. I'm going to put medicine. Come on, Cotto, let's go for it. Box him. This is very interesting. You see Margarita landing all of the punches with pressure at one point, and always as usual. Cotto, even tired, exhausted, looked like he was about to quit, still comes back with the clean punches. Harold Letterman, who'd you get the knights to? I gave it to Miguel Cotto. Hey, 
86, 85, five rounds to four, Miguel Cotto. Jim, I gotta tell you, he started very, very early, Cotto, in the first five rounds, I thought he won four of them, and then, you know, Antonio Margarito took the fight over. He tracked him down, got him up on the ropes, hammered him with that great uppercut, but all of a sudden, in the tenth round, Miguel Cotto just outpunched him. I thought there was no question that Cotto had a, in the ninth round, probably. I thought he had a very, very good ninth round, so I've got Miguel Cotto up one point, five rounds to four, 86, 85. We've got three veteran Las Vegas judges at ringside tonight with a tough job in front of them as we come down the stretch. We've got a wildly enthusiastic crowd, mostly favoring Antonio Margarito, but with a liberal distribution of Cotto fans, some of whom have made the trip from Puerto Rico and New York. We've got a great fight through nine rounds, as everyone expected would be the case. But you know when you look at the fact that Cotto got about five rounds almost in the bank early in the fight. There has not been a knockdown still officially. The fight is very close, and Cotto very well could still be ahead on points. As he is on Harold Letterman's guard, Emmanuel. Power shots in the ninth round. Cotto 21 out of 45. Margarito 25 out of 80. Cotto landing 30 total punches in the round. There's a big left-hand shot by Cotto, but he's satisfied to land the one punch and back away. Well, with Margarito, if you stick around to land the second and third, you're going to get hit in exchange. Another huge left hook by Miguel Cotto. And again, he uses his feet to move away after that. Margarito hasn't been able to land an authoritative punch for the no. last two rounds. No, the clean, which okay, head snapping, going back punches are almost always landed by Cotto. You know, unless you're just running this judge. Good right hand there this. by Cotto. He's doing a pretty good job of blocking and ducking and slipping too, Emmanuel. I mean, you talked about Margarito's defense early on. I've been impressed with Cotto's defense since he's been under pressure from the middle part of the fight. Yes, this is maybe one of his best defensive fights as he's fought. He's had to get nowhere near as much as he did with Shane Mosley, but Shane had to his hands too. This is so far another round like the ninth. Margarito pressuring and pressuring. Cotto taking advantage of it to land clean shots. And, and unlike a lot of boxer types who control the action with their skill, it is Cotto still, to my eye, who's landing the harder shots, but it's like hitting a brick wall that continues to close in. Now Margarito with one of his patented rallies. And Cotto just backs away without trying to answer it. And Margarito getting the better of him here. This goes up until this Cotto's point. Cotto's hurt. Cotto's hurt. I had, I had Cotto winning this round up until those last flurry. And now Cotto ties Margarito up, acknowledging perhaps that he was hurt on that flurry, and he lands a big right hand to end the round. Tough round to score. Don't let him rob the don't let him rob the rounds. Don't let him rob the rounds, okay? We need these last two rounds. Come on, two more. You hear me? I'm here, I understand. Come on. Pop the punches, you're waiting too much. And you see, in the round, as I said earlier, I had Cotto ready the round, even though he's tired and fatigued, he was landing the clean effective blows. In fact, he but then as the round goes on, here comes Margarita with this with accumulation of punches where eventually he started to penetrate and land in his shots. Rough round to score. Our shots in round 10 by CompuBox count. Cotto 13 out of 25, Margarito 22 out of 58. Margarito landed 15 power shots in the last minute of the round. Harold Letterman gave the round to Margarito and the fight is even on his scorecard through 10. A brewing classic in Las Vegas. And when you look at Cotto's face, he looks like the loser. But then he explodes out of nowhere again. But just the judges looking at his face and people watching, looking at Cotto's face, he looks like the guy who's taken the beating. And we know that could be a big factor sometimes, too. Not just the face, but the facial expression even for the most part. Eleventh round of a scheduled 12. I mean, we know Cotto's heavy-handed, and we see him landing these titanic shots, and they don't seem to phase Margarito at all. He's landed the big, clean, head-snapping punches, but never has Margarito been hurt or in trouble in this fight. 
And it's Goto who's bleeding from the nose and the mouth and who's been retreating throughout the entire fight. These are big mental impressions for judges. Those little margarito short shots on the inside now, Emmanuel. Oh, yeah. That's and Goto goes to a knee. Succumbing to the pressure, yeah. much the way Zab Judah succumbed to the pressure against him last year. And that knockdown could ultimately be the difference in the fight. Yeah. Antonio Margarito has finally gotten his man to bend. Miguel Cotto getting beaten up by it's a man. It's over, it's over. He's exhausted, yeah, and it's almost it's... over. The punishment has accumulated to the point where Cotto has nothing left. There's no point in Kenny Bayless allowing this to proceed. No, it's over. It's over. And Evangelista Cotto is going to throw in the towel. And Antonio Margarito has the victory he's been waiting for all his life. That is a modern boxing classic. An epic fight with an epic conclusion. The first loss of Cotto's career. And another triumph for Mexico in the ongoing war with Puerto Rico. Jim, you said it. It went from an exhibition of skill to an exhibition of will. Just as Salvador Sanchez outwilled Wilfredo Gomez. Just as Julio Cesar Chavez chopped down Edwin Rosario and Hector Camacho. So too does Antonio Margarito finally chopped down Miguel Cook. And Edo, let's take a look at the closing sequence. And this is just a case of Miguel Cotto succumbing to the constant pressure. Two uppercuts. Incidentally, Margarito hit yeah. him while he was yeah. down. down. <laughs> That's supposed to be a big thing here in Vegas, right? Yep. But right here, the left uppercut, which I always thought was the most effective punch all night for him. And that's a punch that continued out his career, Cotto has got hit with. There's the punch that hits Cotto on the ear very clearly while his knee is down. Now here's the end as Cotto goes down again of his own volition. And as Margarito proceeds to keep throwing, this time Kenny Bayla steps in and prevents any more harm. And Evangelista Takoto, Miguel's uncle, got up onto the apron and tossed in a towel. Recognizing what everyone else at ringside side could see, that Cotto was finished. Now watch Evangelista Takoto on the far side, on the apron on the right, as he waves the towel and lets Bayless know that they're done. Well, actually, Cotto had told him, I'm done. All he had to do was the fight himself said, stop the fight, I'm through. But anyway, it, it's a, it was an exciting night. Good win for Margarita and a very still credible performance from Miguel Cotto. I think Cotto was done after the first knockdown. Bayless simply didn't recognize it. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this epic knockout performance by Antonio Margarita. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at two minutes, five seconds. Round number 11, the winner by TKO victory. Now a three-time welterweight champion of the world, the Tijuana Tornado, Antonio Margarito. the official scorecards at the end of the 10 rounds two judges had Margarito leading 96 94 and the third judge had it even just as Harold Letterman did at 95 apiece so it was still a winnable fight for either fighter arriving at the 11th and 12th rounds and it was the constant unyielding pressure on the part of Antonio Margarito that ultimately forced the previously unbeaten Miguel Cotto to bend and give in. But C Cotto still fought a very brilliant fight. I, I, you know, you know, he showed his amazing skill. He had got the fight, could have ended about four rounds earlier, but it just too much. Physically, I think the guy was just too much for him and too consistent. 
Miguel Cotto headed back to his dressing room to treat a badly bleeding nose, mouth, whatever other resulting damage has taken place from the ongoing war. A fight not soon to be forgotten here or anywhere in the boxing world. Another chapter in the amazing history of confrontations between Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. Final copy box numbers. Cotto landed more punches and landed at a significantly higher percentage. Cotto totally dominant for sure in the jab category. And we'll take a look at those numbers that show him landing 71 more jabs and landing 39% to only 9% for Margarito. He clearly outboxed Antonio Margarito round after round after round. But Antonio Margarito throwing 647 power punches, an average of 60 per round, and landing 37% of them was enough to force Cotto to yield, along with the frustration for Cotto of landing power shot after power shot after power shot against a man who didn't seem to field him. And now Max Kellerman is in the ring with Antonio Margarito. Congratulations, Antonio. You finally got your shot at the big time. You came from behind to win. How did you do it? Bueno, primero, primeramente quiero agradecer a Dios de salir bien en esta pelea. En verdad, yo le dije, me confié en mi preparación. En verdad, este Cotto es un peleador muy duro. First of all, I want to thank God, but I trusted in my preparation. And obviously, Cotto is a very strong fighter. Pero poco a poco dije, el tornado va a ir, va a ir llegando, lo fui aflojando. Eh, yo le dije a mi esquina que, que lo iba a noquear y gracias a Dios vino a But slowly the tornado rumbled and I told my corner I would knock him out and the knockout did come. Early in the fight he seemed to dominate with his boxing skills. He seemed to land a lot of clean shots to your head. Did he ever hurt you? Bueno, no me lastimó nunca, pero sí este, yo creo que era el plan de ellos ganar los primeros rounds porque dicen que soy un poco lento. Entonces cuando miré que era el 6, yo dije, ya es hora. Este, empecé a apretar un poco más, empezó a aflojar él y así fue como aproveché. No, he never hurt me really. But that was their game plan, to start out strong because they knew that I started out slow. But once the sixth round came, I knew it was my time to press and that's how the win came. How could you tell in the sixth round that he was weakening? Bueno, realmente este, le alcancé a agarrar unos golpes abajo que alcanzó a pujar un poco. Después lo, lo alcancé a conectar con unos, unos upper y así miré que empecé a aflojar. Well, there were some punches low, and then I was able to catch him with some uppercuts, and then I saw that he was slowing down. You are now considered by many the welterweight champion. Paul Williams is still out there. Oscar De La Hoya is out there. Care to remark about any of those guys? Sí, cómo no. A ver, ahora sí me considero el mejor peso welter del mundo, ya que peleadores no quisieron pelear conmigo. A ver si ahora sí. Oscar de la Hoya, a ver si, a ver si la, la promesa que hiciste, a ver si peleas. Yo creo que ahora lo merezco. Si le quieres dar un buen pleito a, a todos los mexicanos, aquí estamos. Oscar, obviously, Oscar de la Hoya is one of the best, but now we show this tremendous fight, and if he comes through with his promise, as he did, we can give Mexicans a true battle. Congratulations, champ. Muchas gracias. Quiero aprovechar para mandar un saludo a mis cuñados, Harold, Hansel, Diego, a mis sobrinos. Meño y Abigail, a mi cuñada Alicia, a mis papás que me están mirando, a todo Tijuana, a mi amigo Víctor, a The Highway Patrol, a todo el mundo por allá en el que era todo Tijuana. Llegó el tornado. Abbreviated version, Jerry. Family shout outs. Y a toda la gente que me... Jim. All right, thank you very much, Max Kellerman. So there is a brand new world welterweight champion, clearly now the number one man in the division with Floyd Mayweather on the sidelines in Grand Rapids, Michigan and the previously unbeaten Miguel Cotto having given in to Antonio Margarito. And a new applicant for a spot among the top 10 pound for pound fighters in the sport. He hasn't generally been racked there before, but clearly Margarito will have to be considered for that kind of, of uh, position now. And he's an unusual kind of fighter, Emmanuel Stewart, because he doesn't much care if you hit him. He's there to throw as many punches as he can possibly throw, and his stamina and his chin are unbelievable.
It's going to be hard to beat this guy. His defense isn't that bad. You had Toto, one of the best fighters there with fast hands, but he picks punches off, and even while he's picking the punches off, he's suddenly moving forward and punching off of that. Very difficult guy to be in there for 12 rounds with Richie. You may beat him for one, two, three, four rounds, but 12 rounds, he applies so much mental and physical pressure, doesn't give you any space, and eventually he starts getting to you. Body, head, ride your punches. Tough guy to be in there with for any fighter. And his body's so big, it, you wonder how in the world he sweats down and makes 147 pounds without sustaining damage in doing so. Incidentally, our Max Kellerman is headed to Miguel Cotto's dressing room to seek an interview with the vanquished Puerto Rican star. Cotto was about an 8-5 to five betting favorite in the fight by the time they went to the post. And frankly, I don't see how his reputation diminishes in any way because he no. showed all of the great skills and courage that we expected him to show. He showed all of the skills. I always said the guy was physically just too big. When I saw the odds where they went to have like three to one, I couldn't believe it. When you talk, at least I always felt it was like a toss-up. But when I saw those odds was that way, I just never could believe it. But fighting a normal guy, I think Cotto still could do good, but it's going to be very hard for him at five feet seven to beat a guy like that. Even though I've had big welterweights with Milton McCoy and Tom Harris, they were six foot one guys, but they didn't have the big leg structure. This guy is very big, very thick all the way around. Physically a very big man for a welterweight. Now let's take a look at uh, all of round 11, the culmination of a drama which really began brewing in the early rounds. Throughout the fight, Antonio Margarito was pressuring, pushing forward, throwing more punches, usually not landing the most effective blows. But by the 11th round, clearly he had made his point. And it was a weary Miguel Cotto who backed into a corner and started to take punishment. Well, Miguel had did all he could, but he, he had Miguel in the rope so much and his whole attack was just basically fighting with his back to the rope. And it's just a matter of time, especially when the punches are coming in. It's from a tall guy. The punches are coming from over top of you. And it's, you can't tie this guy up that easy either. I wonder if some of this was Cotto's legs giving out after having to use his feet over and over and over throughout the fight to try to I, escape the pressure. I just think everything. It was just too much pressure. And Margarita hits you everywhere. It was just accumulation of just mauling him that eventually succumbed to all of that power and strength. So reminiscent of how Zab Judah had given in in the 11th round against Miguel Cotto in Madison Square Garden the year before in a similar epic confrontation in which it was Cotto who stalked and wore down the opponent. But this is a look at how big, how powerful, how rangy Margarito is, how much pressure he can constantly apply. Yes, he can. Five, At this six, point, a bleeding Miguel seven, Cotto didn't eight, seem okay. all that eager to continue the combat. He walked forward as Kenny Bayless allowed him to continue in the fight. But seconds later, you will watch as Cotto once again chose to go down to his knees. Too weary to fire back after having retaliated so effectively, so sharply, with so many brilliant counter shots throughout the fight. And by now, his uncle Evangelista Dakota was already up on the apron, waving the white towel at Kenny Bayless to let them know that they understood what Antonio Margarito had achieved. Well, I think that it was just too much for Cotto and his, his, his uncle, his trainers, they did the right thing. You know, I mean, sometimes I think the referees not criticizing because most of these are my friends. The fighters, sometimes they look and tell you and they look at their face and say, I'm through, I'm done. And just start read that a little bit because a lot of these guys are taking punishment that they don't need. There's no way he was going to survive that round. All right, Max Kellerman has rejoined us at ringside. And I guess, Max, the import of your presence here is that Miguel Cotto was not in any position or with any desire to talk about what happened in the fight. I don't think it was a matter of desire. I think he's too emotional and upset to talk right now. And um, you can imagine that what just happened to Cotto is something, as you mentioned, he did to Jet Zab Judah and many other fighters where Cotto had always broken his opponent. Antonio Margarito just broke Miguel Cotto. And he's going to ask himself after this, was it purely physical? Was there a way physically for him to continue? Did he not want it as much as Antonio Margarito? And once he's gone to that place where he fell at the knee of another man, as so many had fallen before him, if there was anything physically left to give, and it was an emotional loss, the question is, can he come back from that place now that he's gone there? Um, he's understandably extremely upset right now. The kind of uh, physical loss which could, in fact, 
make an imprint on the rest of Miguel Cotto's career, perhaps a mental imprint on the rest of his career as well. With the uh, opening ceremony of the Olympics in Beijing 12 days away, it's uh, pertinent to note that Miguel Cotto's last loss was in the medal round of the Olympics in Sydney, Australia, eight years ago. And before we leave you tonight, we want to show you an edited package which has been put together by our professionals in the truck. And this is more or less a tone poem on the brutal beauty of boxing. You're going to see blood. You're going to see sacrifice. You're going to see pain. You're going to see the emotional hurt that goes with this kind of experience, both for the fighter and for their families. And guys, if either of you feel as though you have anything you can add as we watch it, go right ahead. But right now, let's roll the tape. On that exceptional production note, we're going to leave you from this night in Las Vegas, this unforgettable fight between the victorious Antonio Margarito and the vanquished champion, Miguel Cotto. Cotto versus Margarito has been brought to you by MGM Grand, City of Entertainment in Las Vegas, Rums of Puerto Rico, the rum capital of the world, Cacate Beer, Cerveza with an Attitude, Reebok, Your Move, brought to you by Universal Pictures, Death Race the Movie in theaters August 22. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment brought to you by HBO. We'd like to thank the following internet partners. And so for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada. And as you look at the names of those of you who have brought you this broadcast tonight, or those of us who brought you this broadcast tonight, and you reflect on that package of intimate shots of the experiences of boxing that you saw at the end of the show. We want to tell you that one of the greatest cameramen in sports television, a man who's been bringing you those kinds of pictures for 30 years now, isn't with us tonight because after a relapse of leukemia, he's fighting for his life in a hospital room in Seattle, Washington. And as we go off the air tonight, the thoughts of all of us on our HBO crew are with Gordy Sager and his family and friends here in Las Vegas. Good night.